Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to ZBTR TV. It's 2024. This is our first show this year, and we are so excited about what we are about to discuss and what we're going to talk about. And we do hope that you've had a good holiday season with family, with friends, and with everything else that's going on around the world. It is a good thing to celebrate with family. Welcome to the show. Do tag a friend, tell them ZBTR2024 is on the line. We are live and we have an amazing discussion today. We're going to talk about something that is just going to blow your mind and captivate you. And we're so excited that you joined us today. All right, my guest, my guest, my guest. Let me bring my guest up here. My guest is Mr. J. Mwamba. He's an author. And I'll just read a little bio, his little bio here, what I have. Uh, Jem Wamba's numerous writings, credits include the New York Daily since 1997 and the first Irish, and the Irish Echo since 1991. He previously worked as a sports reporter for the Zambia Daily Mail. He's a graduate of the City College of New York, uh, where he earned an MA in comparative history is author of boxing novel seconds out and his current book the crash of the buffalo is what we'll be discussing here jay welcome and happy new year happy new year nathan thank you for having me it's taken you know this is our 16th year of doing this show and i said to myself i was gonna tell him this it took you 16 years to be here <laughs> <laughs> too long <laughs> Yeah, too long, too long. So, Joe, welcome and everybody welcome. We, we're going to get straight into it because we have a lot of material to, to I mean, to talk about and to to discuss. Um, how did you develop interest in uh, sports journalism? Or did you just study journalism and when you got the job, they throw you into the sports department? What happened? Well, yeah, I did study journalism at the uh, Evelyn Horn College. Mm -hmm. uh, great, great institution, uh, you know, it was. And uh, of course, you know, as a kid, um, you know, I was a sports fan, you know, yeah, especially yeah. soccer and boxing. Uh -huh. Loved soccer and loved boxing. Um, so when I was given the opportunity to work for the, uh, the uh, Delhi, Zambi Delhi Mail, they asked me, you know, after the interview, the editor-in-chief then, Komani Kachinga, uh -huh. and I asked, so where do you want to work, news or, 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 or uh, sports? sports. Uh -huh. I mean, you're young. I was very young. And, uh, you know, what's better than uh, having to get paid for your passion, you know? <laughs> Watching all those great stars, you know, Lottie uh, Mwali, uh, Godfrey Chitalu. So it was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer. So that's how you ended up in the sports department. Okay. Talk about your early years in your career. Um, what are some of the memorable moments that you, you can share with us? Apart from what we are going to talk about. 
Yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, so I started at the Daily Mail in January. I think it was January 3, 82, 1982. Mm. And it was fun. You know, you know, at that time, Zambian sport was really exciting. We had uh, world-class performers, you know, especially boxing, soccer, uh, and even athletics. You know, we had, uh, you know, some really outstanding uh, performers. And, uh, but of course, um, my first trip as a sports reporter was mm-hmm. to Egypt, Oh October wow! 1983. Yeah, so that that was a highlight. That's my first uh, assignment, international assignment. Uh, went to the national team. Uh, it was an Olympic qualifier for the uh, 1984 Olympics in which were hosted in Los Angeles, and against one of Zambia's you know biggest rivals mm. out there, Egypt. So that was very exciting. Back in those days, you, you'd go like a week before the game. So we spent one oh, week in um, wow. in Cairo. Yeah, so that was really exciting. Mm. You know, so you you also used to attend the training sessions? Um, not not really in in Zambia, yeah. But there, I, I did not attend. Out, I'll be in the hotel actually. You know, uh, you know, I'll do the interviews and then you know, sending stories back home. Mm-hmm. Uh, but later later on, yeah, when I because I traveled with the team from eighty two um, through you know uh, eighty eighty eight when I left. Mm-hmm. Actually, the last my last assignment was um, Ghana. Uh, oh wow! When we eliminated Ghana. Uh, from the the Seoul Olympics, yeah, that was my last uh, uh, trip of the national team. Uh, mm-hmm. But sometimes I'll go to the you know to the stadium. In fact, in I remember in your own day, um, this was the World Cup qualifier, nineteen April nineteen eighty five. Mm-hmm. I did actually go to the to the stadium, the the huge massive stadium, wow. and I actually took part in a training session. <laughs> and <laughs> um, but I, I wasn't in shape then, you know. So just this oh, is the oh, only oh, point. Oh, oh. Wait, wait, wait. When you say took part in this training session, you mean doing the f- workouts with the team? Well, the warm-ups. The warm-ups. Oh, the warm-ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, yeah, you yeah. know, before they start training, I mean, the warm-up alone is like murder, you know. So, they're they're jogging from one end of the pitch to the other and back. Uh-huh. And usually, like, how many, like how many laps? Uh, probably about like three, four. They're warming up. They're do, doing different stuff. But that, you know, they're jogging across. And I did it just once. Oh, my goodness. And um, I, I was knackered, you know, and uh, uh, bon, uh, Bonfess Simuto, you know, he cracked a joke and everybody laughed. He says that, he said, that, I remember he said that, prom, <laughs> you know, because I didn't have the stamina, you know. Yeah, so, oh, okay. yeah, those were the good old days, yeah. The good old days, well, yeah. interesting, yeah. So you didn't go to the Seoul Olympics? No, I did not go to the Seoul Olympics. Uh, the Delhi Mail did not send a reporter to the Seoul Olympics. Uh, uh, Jared, I believe, yeah, Jared went from the Times of Zambia. From Jared Times Mulinda, of Zambia. My, my, my mm. friend, yeah. How how are the how are the assignments allocated? I mean, like in your department as a sports reporter, was there like a roster to say no, you went last time, so this one goes next time? How how, how would it work? It was just uh, the editors, uh, the editors, you know, decision. Yeah, that was uh, uh, the editor. Then was uh, well, he was my editor throughout. Uh, sports editor James Mombazi, the late uh, James Mombazi. So he mm-hmm. would just say, "Well, Jay, you're going here." Uh, you know, Moses Walita was the chief reporter. You know, Moses, you're going there. You know, so it was arbitrary. I don't know what you know. <laughs> what criteria they used? Yeah. Well, oh, that's too much power and authority. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why he's a boss. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's why he's a boss. Yeah. Boss. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, now let's get to our, 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 the reason we, we are here today and uh, to, to, to really get into the nitty gritties of this. Jay, the Buffalo crashed 30 years ago um, last year. We're in 2024, which makes it this April to make it 31 years. Um, what prompted you to write the book now after 30 years? Well, I've actually been working on the project. Uh, it, it's it's not just now. I've been working on it for like about 12, 13 years. Um, mm-hmm. It was a, it wow. was a long, taxing you know uh, process. You know, mm-hmm. I, you, you had to do the research, a lot of research. Um, I had to do interviews. You know, there were people I was chasing for like years before I finally ab- I was able to you know Thank catch them here, like mm-hmm. uh, General Shikapasha. I actually almost given up hope, but I finally I was able to track him down. I I was receiving numbers on contact contact information for him over the mm-hmm. years, but I finally was able to contact him. I think in twenty twenty one. I think it was yeah. Oh wow! Um, so it's been a long process, and you know, uh, a lot of interviews, and you know, I would, most of the interviews were taped. You know, mm-hmm. what some interviews, uh, some I did when, when you know I traveled to Zambia to see my dad. And I would, uh, you know, I, I would interview people like Manfred Chavinga interviewed him. And mm-hmm. then, you know, you do, you do like, it's like a one hour 
tech interview. Yeah. And do you know how long it takes to transcribe that? Because I and I, you know, I wasn't that great. Now they've, they've got the software where, yes. where I can play, yes. you know, the, the tape and it's, uh, you know, although you still have to review it. But I would, you know, if a one hour interview would take like, uh, you know, four or five days to, to transcribe. I mean, oh, for wow. me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so that's why it took so many years. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then, of course, the writing process. And then there were periods when I couldn't write. You know, I mean, I had some, you know, personal family issues. You know, my, well, first of all, the COVID situation. Yes. You know, because, you know, as a writer, your mind has to be clear. There was all that anxiety over COVID. We went remote, you know, and, uh, you know, I couldn't write. And then, uh, unfortunately, my brother, who lived with me here in this apartment, uh, you know, he had fallen sick, um, you know, like about three years ago. Uh, he was sick and I was taking, there were just two of us, so I was taking care of him and I, I couldn't write, you know, unfortunately yes, he passed away, you know, I couldn't write. So it took a long, long time because the plan really was to have uh, a draft ready. I wanted to write first and not look for a publisher. Mm -hmm. uh, so the plan was to have the draft ready, uh, like two years, like, uh, so that would be like, um, you know, 20, 2020, I would have had a draft ready. Mm -hmm. I then start uh, uh, 2020. 2021, I then start looking for a publisher, I then have the okay. book published uh, in time for the 30th anniversary last year. But of course, you know. Also, the target was to have it published on the 30th anniversary. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. But you know, like my, my like mom used to say, you know, you make plans, but you always say, Lisa Pali, you know, we make yeah, plans, but I we know. don't know what's going to happen. So uh, that, that's, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> to many, so the scripture what... says, many are the plans of men. Exactly. But the lord's will prevails you had to contend with a lot of change of names like countries nation nations and some of the you know all 30 years is a long time um did you have to contact some members of the families of the um uh, of the people that uh, perished yeah i uh, i was in i was um in touch with some of them and um but obviously you know it's a book has to be focused structured I mean, you, you know, you, 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 well, at least this book, you know, I, I hope and pray that others, you know, will follow up and, you know, write other books on the disaster from different perspectives, different angles. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. But so I just focused on a few. And actually, you see, I had no plans of actually when, when this uh, accident happened, I was actually here because I left Zambia in 89. So that was like almost three and a half years before the crash. Mm -hmm. And um, when it happened, of course, I was stunned because I knew, you know, a lot of the players, I traveled with them. You know, I'd been, you know, I knew, in fact, I knew one of the pilots, uh, uh, Colonel Mwanga, Lieutenant Colonel Victor Mwanga, I knew him pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, a Red Arrows, you know, Zaf, Red Arrows club sector at one time. And I spent time with him. Uh, Red Arrows played in the uh, the old Africa Cup Winners' Cup, uh, mm -hmm. I think it was 84. So I covered the games and he would pick me up from the from the, from the the office to the Zambia Daily Mail and take me to the airport and would cover the arrival of the opponents. Yeah. So, I, okay. you know. Yeah. Oh, so, um, mm. yeah. So, but I just, I, it, when the crash occurred, the, the only, a, a little while later, I did not know about Kelvin Mutali, but, uh, you know, I started hearing about him. Everybody was raving about Kelvin. Oh, what a player, what a player. I was able to watch a few video clips mm. uh, about him and I was really intrigued because all the people I knew in my circle, um, for example, um, one of the, the, um, people was instrumental in Kelvin's, um, basic transition, you know, he, he was playing second division football mm. in, in Nitrogen Stars, I believe. And uh, um, no, no, Noel Kawano, his brother, his twin brother, they were much older than me. Uh, his twin brother, Chris Kawano, was a very, very good friend of mine. Yeah. And, um, and Noel worked for Nitrogen Chemicals, is it? Yeah. So he helped, yeah. you know, they were in kind of supporters and, you know, it's in the book. Uh, so they, <laughs> they're the ones that got uh, Kelvin from Nitrogen Stars to Nkana. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. So, but I wanted to learn more. And in fact, so I was like, okay, you know what? I should write a book on Kelvin, do interviews with him and, you know, I mean, sorry, with him, with his family and so on. And I, I was able to locate his brother after a while. You know, it's always, it's a long process. Um, Michael, his, his older brother, by like uh, 13 months, 13 mm -hmm. months, uh, Pastor Michael Chanda. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we did a lot of interviews and, uh, you know, other folks. And so that's why, if you notice, um, there's a little focus on Kelvin, just you know, a phenomenal player. So that's yeah, the book yeah. I was going to write, but later, oh, you know, okay, <laughs> yeah, that later, you know, I said, well, if, you know, a number of reasons, and it's like, you know, this has, has to be documented. Um, this event, you know, the world must know about this, they shouldn't forget about this uh, tragic yeah. event, mm -hmm. and also just to you know, uh, put Zambian soccer up there.
Yeah, that's true. This is a must read. It's it's I mean, like like I said on my Facebook page, I have never I've read so many books in my lifetime. I've never read something that is well chronicled and a lot of details. Okay, we have a lot of ground to cover here. And the purpose of this interview is to provoke and create that appetite for everybody watching out there. You're gonna watch a recorded thing to buy this book. Let's we're going to just start some nitty bitties here from the book. Okay, let's talk about this gentleman, uh, Frank Taylor. Frank Taylor. Ah, tell yes. us about Frank Taylor. You talk about Frank Taylor. What about him? Yeah, I actually, I start off the prologue starts with Frank, Frank Taylor. So this, mm. this photo was taken in Moscow, USSR. Mm -hmm. This was in September 19. Oh, that's when it was called Moscow, right? Ah, USSR. Which, USSR yeah. 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 It's outside. We were staying there. We had gone there for, uh, I had gone there uh, the USSR was hosting the uh, World Youth uh, Cup, yeah. uh, which is now the Under Twenty World Cup. Mm -hmm. So that was September 1985, and uh, the Russian, you know, the Russian, the Soviet embassy rather, they came to a deli mill and they said we'd like to send a, um, you know, a reporter there. So again, oh, really? Mr. yeah, Mr. Mombazi came and uh, chose me. Jay, you go into. It's interesting because I just come out of September. Uh, End of July, August, I had been that same just months, uh, weeks earlier. I was mm. in um, West Germany with City of Lusaka, you know. Oh, okay. And, uh, Colonel Panji, who is uh, he's, he's watching, you know, just reconnected with Colonel Panji Kaunda. They had a great organization, uh, City of Lusaka. Mm. So for me, it was fantastic because I had been, um, you know, my dad was an educator, so a, a historian as well. I had been reading uh, this like 900 page book, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. So after finishing the book, you know, oh, I go to Germany. So I'm passing through some of the cities and places that I mentioned in the book. And then um, the following month, I mean, uh, the USSR. So Frank Taylor, um, he was the chairman of uh, an organization. I don't know. I think it's still in existence, APS, AIPS. So it's basically, it's like a world um, association of sports journalists. Mm. So he was the chairman. And I met him, a lot. if you see the, if you show the photo again, for us old timers, immediately I saw him, he's like, wow, that guy looks like Frank Cannon. Remember Cannon? The, the, yes, the, yes. Well, I said, the show I said why, TV. he looks like, yeah, you exactly. know, I said, why, he looks like Frank Cannon, you know? And he walked with a limp. Um, ah. He walked with a limp. And after, you know, of course, I'm not going to, I wasn't too curious. I mean, I was curious, but I wasn't going to ask him. But after a couple of days, I decided to ask him what happened, you know. And he just said, matter of fact, he says, oh, I was uh, I was in the uh, Manchester United plane that crashed in uh, Munich, you know, uh, in uh, February 1958. Uh, they, they were coming from a game and uh, it, it was snowy and everything. And they were attempting to take off. I think they attempted two, two times aborted mm -hmm. take off. And the third time the plane crashed. So the plane didn't actually take off. It didn't lift, you know. Otherwise, yeah. obviously, uh, uh, he wouldn't be there. But anyhow, so, uh, and I was like, wow. And then it just ended right then and then. And, you know, I forgot about Frank Taylor. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started working on the uh, crash of the Buffalo and I was doing the research and uh, I came across his book. He wrote a book. It's actually behind me there. Behind you, one of the books there on the show. Yeah, yeah. it's um, <laughs> um, The Day a Team Died, you know. So oh. that's like the definitive chronicle of that, you know, the... The the event. Crash, they call it. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He, he was in hospital for like nine, ten months. He was one of there were nine. He Jews. was in the. He was in the on the plane and he, he survived. Was he was on the plane. Yes, yeah, yeah. So there were nine journalists and eight of them died. He was the only one to survive. Wow. Yeah. So he wrote that book and Bobby Charlton was on the plane as well. He survived. Uh, Matt Busby, the actually you see Manchester lost uh, eight players. Only eight players mm -hmm. died. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And nine journalists, uh, I mean, sorry, eight journalists, eight players. And then there were other folks that died, other people, yeah. So when I was working or doing research for my book, it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, you know, the book, Crash of the Buffalo, really, it's written for the international audience. Because, yeah. again, this is for the world to know about Zambian, about this tragedy and about Zambian football. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, that's the hook I use. You know, it's the prologue. I introduced him right at the beginning. Because that's yes. how I meet this guy, uh, the survivor of the famous... Uh, infamous uh, Manchester United plane crash, mm -hmm. and not knowing that this is '85, not knowing that about eight years later, my own country would also be involved in the would in also the, be involved in the same exactly in the same tragedy. Yeah, yeah. So that's the story. one of the things, Jay, that captures my attention about the book is how you incorporate the events leading up to the crash of the Buffalo and some detailed historical 
events. Let me just call out the historical events and I just want you to make brief comments. So, um, Sir Bobby Charlton's encounter with the national team? Yes. Again, uh, Bobby Charlton was um, also on the, in the uh, you know, Manchester United plane crash. Mm -hmm. thing. Uh, he survived. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he wasn't too seriously injured, but he survived. Okay. Uh, so in 19, uh, I think it was October 19, 1978, uh, Brian Tyler was national team coach. So he, he took uh, Zambia, the national team, to England, to, you know, the, Britain, the very first time Zambia I traveled to Britain, you know, for games. Mm. And uh, the first game was against Shrewsbury. It was a Division Three team, I believe, at that time. And Bobby Charlton was, I think he had just turned 40. It was just yeah. after his birthday. Now, it's, it's mm -hmm. in the book, yeah. He featured as a guest player for Shrewsbury. And they beat 40 Zambia. years old? Yeah, 40, yeah. And he scored a hat-trick. They beat Zambia 4-0. They beat them. Okay, yeah. just that. Don't tell everything. We want the people to buy the book. Okay. We want the people to buy the book. Okay. Another historical event is you mention, uh, you basically like highlight what the Buffalo planes were used for. You see, in talking about this, this is what I did, Jay. I said to myself, let me look for a picture of a Buffalo plane. Uh, so generally, what were these planes designed designed for? Uh, okay, well, the Buffalo plane, it was uh, uh, built by uh, de Havilland of Canada. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the early early 1960s, the, the U.S. Air Force uh, wanted to, uh, a, a, you know, a, a plane that was rugged, uh, it, it was a, a what they call a STO, a short takeoff and landing, STOL, mm -hmm. uh, which could land on fields, you know, uh, rough fields, you know. It, it can land on a football pitch and so on. So, they, you know, they put out tenders and the Havilland won the, the tender. The and they, tender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they developed that plane. But uh, the U.S. Air Force bought uh, four of them and then they discontinued. They, they switched, uh, the, you know, the priorities or whatever. And so De Havilland went on and built, uh, they built only 127, less than 130 only. Oh, wow. So which means the plane was not really, that's a word. You know, when you buy, that's why, you know, they tell you, uh, if a new phone rolls out, don't go buy the new phone, the new technology immediately, because there are glitches, you know? Buy yeah, it the next know. year, because, you know, there was it's a- It's like an experiment. Exactly, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's more like a prototype, basically. Yeah. So that's what, uh, that, that's, that was the story of the Buffalo. But Zambia, because Zambia, you know, uh, the country, you know, it's, you know, the, the, some of the fields around the country, they're not tarmacked, you know, the Air Force needed something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been told, you know, I spoke to um, Air Force, former Air Force ZAF, you know, pilots who flew the plane. It was extremely powerful, meaning it could, you know, you just push the throttle and it starts moving and, it starts and it could moving. take off in a very short distance. Very rugged plane, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Buseri was Zambia's first expatriate coach. That was an interesting piece for me, you know, a young Zambian, because I remember Buseri, you know, re listening to the news, reading the papers. So he was the first Zambian expatriate coach. Yes, he was a first expatriate, the first full-time national coach, coach and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and he's, he, he's an interesting story. Actually, I met him um, when he came back. This was 82. Uh, 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 Faz, the government uh, minister of sport, mm -hmm. brought him back uh, to as a as technical director when Zambia qualified for the 82 uh, Libya Afcon. Afcon I think I remember that. How old was he? Can you I, I I forget. So he must have been in his fifties or so. And I actually met him. And then and th I just joined the Daily Mail. That was my first uh, month. And mm -hmm. uh, I actually profiled him. You know. So I, I and that's part of the profile is in the book. And I completely forgot about it. I went online trying to get information about him. And then only about him, him. Yeah. He had passed away. And then you know Jerry Mushimba. You know. I hope he's listening to this. Jerry, the the writer. He wrote the Grotfish Teller book. Mm -hmm. And he's a tremendous, uh, uh, Jerry uh, was, he was very helpful. He's a tremendous uh, researcher. And he actually had dug up my story and sent it to me, the, my profile of Busalik, yeah. Busalik, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah mm -hmm. I would not forgotten because, you know, yeah, I've written so much stuff over the years. I've, I've forgotten I know, me, right? <laughs> most of the stuff, yeah. yeah. Thank God for the, for the, what you call it, computers, internet, yeah. USBs. Now everything can be, can be what you call it, can be put together in nicely where you can easily access. Two more historical things before we get into the events leading up to the crash of the Buffalo. Uh, I had no clue that Imanu Omoape and Bernard Chanda came from the Zambia Secondary Schools. What were they calling it? Zambia Secondary Schools? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Zambia Schools, yeah. They were, <laughs> you see, um, 
and the uh, the stories that went. So when Buscelli came, and uh, I decided to when I was working on the book, uh, this is mm. early 2019. So I wanted to provide context. Yeah, sure, the world, most of the soccer, some soccer fans have read about the crash, mm -hmm. but they thought Zambia was just like an <clears throat> ordinary team. No, they were not an ordinary team. They were one of the African powerhouses. So uh, I, 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 I asked myself, I say, who's, a, who's alive? Because I wanted to add context. Mm -hmm. And at that time, um, at that time, uh, uh, Dixon McQuaza was alive. In fact, this is like four months before he passed away. So I was able to track him down again, and I think mm. I should thank uh, Wine Good uh, Malunga. I believe he gave me the number mm -hmm. uh, in Wansha. So I called uh, Dixon, and you know it was a long process. I would, uh, he gave me his daughter's uh, number, out you know uh, WhatsApp questions and everything, and then uh, I would call him later, like the next day. I was actually in Zambia at that point, and I would uh, interview him on the phone and tape uh, the conversation. Yeah, conversation. So, mm. yeah. So he's he's the one who told me. He says, you see, when Busali came. Mm -hmm. um, he got rid of all the, the veteran players apart from three himself, mm -hmm. Dixon, Dick Chama, and Godfrey Chitalu. Then he brought in all the Zambia schools, uh, uh, you know, the, international the younger, schools. the younger guys. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and that's that's what uh, that's that's what the Zambia football was built on because oh, the Zambia, wow. Zambia schools had a uh, terrific program. Yes, you know, it's it's it. because Kalusha came from that as well, right? I uh, remember that. Yeah, I believe yeah, he played yeah, but yeah. this is when it was really uh, in its know, top class elite. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. They would have uh, Ipswich, you know, they had English youth teams coming. Bobby R Robson came with Ipswich youth team. And by chance, I met online, I met uh, on Facebook, actually, uh, Ronnie Hollywood, who was an Irish. Um, he's actually he's in Ireland right now. He's retired in his late 70s, middle, late 70s. Oh, he's still alive? He's still alive. He was involved with the uh, Zambia Schools program. So he's the one that gave me a lot of information on that, you know. Mm -hmm. So they worked with Buselic, you know. So that, that's that's the story there. Okay. The last one on the historical points. I, you know, I. that's why I'm saying this book just brings out information. And you're like, huh? I didn't know about this. <laughs> so now we have what is called the Chipolo Polo fa soccer fans, something like that. So actually the first soccer fans group or was started by late President Rupia Banda. Yes, he was a co-founder, yeah, but he was very instrumental. Tell well, our well. listeners what it was called. And uh, my goodness, Valupia Banda was... Uh, huh? Yes. Now, this is, again, so Buselic, that's why he's, very, he's an important character because, you know, he comes and then turns Zambia into a powerhouse, African powerhouse. Mm. So uh, they were Zambia was just like a Mickey Mouse team before that. So then all of a sudden, he, he comes in 71, 72, 73. They're, they're, they're in the running for the World Cup. They're in, in mm -hmm. the running for the Africa Cup. And because of that success, they're beating teams, Nigeria 5-1, you know, they're beating Morocco 4-0. And uh, because of that, um, you know, people are excited. And uh, uh, um, uh, President Rupia Banda, well, he wasn't president then, but, you know, yeah, yeah. he's a big fan. He's a big sports fan. I would work with him later, years later, in boxing uh, and soccer. And him and his uh, colleagues decide to form the traveling supporters team, Bola Bola. Okay. Yeah. So they they were following yeah. Zambia. They would fly to you know fly. Well, they would charter planes and fly you know to the destination wherever Zambia was playing. So that was the very first uh, you know um, sub traveling supporters uh, club. Okay. Interesting. The purpose of this is to provoke you watching that you need to get a copy of this book. The book is entitled Crash of the Buffalo. My guest is Jem Wamba. Let's take a commercial break. Drink some water. Tell a friend. There is an exciting conversation going on on ZBTR TV, and we'll be right back. Are you ready to start your own show? Look no further than Zambia Blog Talk Radio TV's unbeatable hosting packages. We have hosting packages for all your live streaming needs. Introducing our basic, standard, and premium plans designed to fit your show's unique needs. With our basic plan, you get hosting and streaming only to Zambia Blog Talk Radio TV platforms, technical support, and a full hour of captivating content. Choose our standard plan, and you'll not only enjoy everything in the basic plan, but also receive promotions on our Facebook page and the freedom to stream to your personal platform, Facebook or YouTube. Your show, your choice. And for those who demand the best, our premium plan offers all the benefits of the basic 
and standard plans, plus the ability to multi-stream to your preferred platforms. That's right, the spotlight's on you. But wait, there's more. Are you planning an unforgettable event? Our events package is your ticket to flawless live streaming. From weddings to conferences, we make every moment count. Ready to shine on Zambia Blog Talk Radio TV. Reach out to us today at ZBTR2009 at gmail.com for questions, inquiries, or to create a custom one-time show package. Remember, at Zambia Blog Talk Radio TV, your success is our mission. All fees are subject to periodic review and change, ensuring you always get the best value. So, what are you waiting for? Let's make your show a sincere only on Zambia Blog Talk Radio TV. Zambia Blog Talk Radio TV, where vision comes to life. Follow our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash Zambia Blog Radio or visit our website at www.zbtr2009.wixsite.com forward slash ZBTR TV. Don't miss this opportunity to shine on ZBTR TV, where your vision comes to life. Hi everyone, welcome back. My guest this morning is Jay Mwamba, and we're discussing the book that he has written, The Crash of the Buffalo. Uh, Jay, let's 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 take let's look at uh, some of the comments. Uh, we have a lot of people watching here. Happy New Year from Prisca. Hi Prisca. Happy New Year from Brenda. Good morning and Happy New Year, Matilda. Uh, Moses says, this is a must read. I totally agree, Moses. Uh, KC in Timpa, great works. But Jay, again, thank you for the free copy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cletus, you don't say those things on media. It was a download. Yeah, it was a download. It was a media download. I, yeah. I know, I know. I'm just, <laughs> Cletus is my brother. I'm just messing yeah. with him. Watching from Atlanta, Siddiq our leader there, and uh, ZLA, uh, Frida says, Happy New Year. Great read. Indeed, it was a great read. And uh, everybody else watching, let's try to take a few more. Linda, this is interesting. My sister. <laughs> yeah, I can tell from the name there. The whole Mwamba clan is in the house today. <laughs> Very interesting. Great work. Happy New Year uh, from Pastor Alan in uh uh, uh what do you call it florida uh jay events leading up to that fateful day of the crash um started with a trip 
to Mauritius to the Mauritius game. Okay, uh, issues in Malawi. They, they had to return to my. They couldn't land in Madagascar. Uh, wh what was going on here? Uh, in your investigation, what was good? Did somebody do his job? I was thinking that maybe these were mind games because these countries didn't like our team. No, unfortunately, and you know, it's cut a lot throughout the book. Um, mm. Every time the team used, uh, you know, the military planes, you know, primarily the Buffalo, there was always drama. There were there were issues. Um, it happened when they were going to Ghana for the. Uh, Olympic qualifying eighty eight. Uh, we flew the. We flew myself. Uh, Jared, Jared was there. We mm -hmm. flew with the supporters on a in a um, the seven 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 or seven Zambia Zambia Airways QZ. Uh, but the team flew on a Buffalo too, uh, and they were forced down uh, over Congo, which is uh, Zaire then you know Congo yeah. now. Uh, there was always drama. So basically, it was a re uh, occurrence of the Congo situation in that the. The nation, the country they were flying over was unaware <laughs> that there's a plane coming. So but they, how? That's, that's I don't know. That's, that's, that's a that's a very serious risk right there. Yeah, only only Zaf Zaf can explain that. I mean, the Zaf then, not not the current, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. leadership. But so, and I spoke to Beauty Lupia, who was uh, she, she was uh, a the Times of Zambia reporter. Mm -hmm. She flew with the team to Mauritius. So they 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 um. They, they're flying over Madagascar, and apparently they were supposed to land there to refuel. Yes. And yes. Uh, they were not given permission. It's at night, so they're circling around at Tananarive, and they're taught to go back to Malawi. Malawi. Yeah. So if anything could have happened, if anything had happened, it should have happened then. So apparently they did not get permission to fly over. This is a military plane, and, you know, this is Africa. You don't just uh, you have military planes flying over countries who fight permission so they were forced back so that's what happened here okay so the, there was a very short space of time uh between mauritius and going to the senegal trip right was it like 24 hours or 48 hours uh, about 24 really in fact it, it, it was supposed to be lace because the they arrived uh, according to beauty they arrived um they landed uh uh monday afternoon maybe about 15 16 hours that's when mm -hmm. they landed at uh, you know the international airport, and um, Martin Mwamba, no relation. The, he was on the, they had carried three goalkeepers to three goalkeepers to Mauritius, okay. and uh, he, he he told me when they landed and they were taxiing to the Zaf area. They, yes, they, they, someone pointed out they saw the buffalo because they used they, they switched planes. It wasn't the same plane. It wasn't the same plane. Yeah, no, no they switched planes. Um, and I asked uh, uh, General Shikapasha why they switched planes, and he says the the buffalo that they were going to use, the one that crashed, was actually a VVIP plane. It was more comfortable, and oh, really? uh, yeah. So they, it, they, it was pointed out to them, saying that's the plane you're going to use. You know, they're refueling it right now. So they got to to Masia Lodge. That would be like about 17 or after 17 hours, because mm -hmm. our friend uh, Simata Simata, uh, he told me he was actually he had knocked off. So he, you know, it's about 17 hours, mm -hmm. and he, driving home, and he was joining. Uh, about to join Greatest Road when he saw the bus, the national team bus coming from, you know, from the airport going to, you know, town to Masia, Emmersdale. And the, the players recognized this car and some of them, you know, stuck their heads out of the thing and said, Mdala is some Mdala, you know? So he <laughs> followed them. So that's about 17 hours. And um, um, Simata got to um, to Masia Lodge and spent time with them. And uh, I guess at that point he decided he was he was told that there were a lot of empty seats on the plane. You know, it's a, mm -hmm. it was a flight. So he was like, okay, uh, he decides, okay, the, I should uh, fly, go with them to Senegal, you know? So, but the rest of the book, we don't want to give up too much. But long story short, they were supposed to leave at 11 in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, when they woke up the next morning for breakfast, uh, Martin, Martin Mamba tells me after breakfast, you know, and he, he tells me what they ate for breakfast, uh, you know, their the last meal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you've actually detailed it in the yeah, in the, yeah, in what, the yeah what they had for breakfast. Oh, wow. And uh, this is about 7 30, 8 o'clock. And uh, uh, Godfrey and Alex, the coaches, called Martin and uh, Andrew Tembo uh, to their room and they said, Look, you guys are staying behind because uh, we're going to be joined by Kalusha and Charles. Uh, mm. But they didn't know, of course, that Charles was injured then, you know. So that's how uh, Martin packed his stuff and you know, left Monsieur Lodge 
came into the city, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so they didn't make it at 11. For some reason, there was, I don't know what the delay was, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've tried to get that. I, I Nobody, you know, it's 30 years. You know, people have moved on. You know, people have died and so on. A lot of yeah quasi information right and of course i i i tried to go with accurate information so if it's you know i was told stuff but which i i couldn't publish because you know i cannot verify it um then around 14 hours um mr kashiba sonstone kashiba was acting director of sport he went to the airport mm -hmm. and he actually saw you know he, he found the team there and he actually alex him and alex were but you know friends they both came from Lapula. You read the joke, you know. Yeah, I read so, the joke. Say we're from Zai, we are from we're from. <laughs> and Alex took uh, Kashiba on on the plane on the Buffalo, mm. and he says, "This is where you're sitting," you know. So mm -hmm. Bakashiba is my source. He tells me where Alex, Alex, and uh, Godfrey were sitting, right, you know, parallel to the wings, and that's on any plane. That's the the sturdiest right. part of a plane, mm -hmm. which is why which explains why um, uh, like Godfrey's body was pretty much intact, you know. Mm -hmm. Apart from the face was eaten by fish, and that was yeah, again yeah. Uh, the professor Konge. I interviewed him just before he passed away. Uh, he told he was there in uh, they went to retrieve the bodies. Well, you know, Alex's body was cut in half because they were right in the middle of the plane. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't know what the delay was, but they finally took off uh, uh, like around uh, probably 15, 15, 15, 30. That's when they took off. Yeah, one of the interesting things that comes out of the book, those that have read this book can, can attest to this. We have a number of people that, I mean, literally missed this plane by a few hours. You talk about Martin and Andrew, and then let me uh, quote something from the book. Uh, Mr. Sonstone Kashiva and Co was the last Zambian to board and he disembark alive from the AF319 that day. Whoa. And I'm saying to myself, so Beauty Lupia, the reporter, was replaced. Uh, the two players were told they couldn't travel because they, they would have to make space for Kalusha and the, uh, Charlie Koo. Of course, uh, Mr. Kashiva. And the Smarter Smarter wanted to get on the plane, but he missed the first chairperson. When he drove his home, the wife told him they just crossed each other. That's how all these people missed this flight to Senegal. Yes, and, and there was also uh, Jared uh, Kachingwe from the Times. So yes. Jared, Jared was supposed to replace Beauty Lupia. Okay. Um, but um, oh yes, yes, you tell I, how you know when you talk about Jared, it reminds me of. Back in the day, if you have to travel abroad, you have to get travelers checks. Right? Exactly. Yeah, things that. And, and yeah. he couldn't get these travelers checks in time. That's why he, he couldn't make the plane. Okay. And, and then there was also Goliath. Also, was in the same Goliath Mungonga from the Delhi Delhi uh, Mail. He was also supposed to be on the plane, but uh, again, the the money. You know, this was before credit credit cards, so they yeah. couldn't get the travelers checks in time. Yeah. The plane takes off. It's supposed to do a 30 minute stopover in Gabon just to refuel, but it took two hours. Yes, well, um, you know, first of all, that plane had been parked. The, uh, it had been parked uh, outside, you know, by the ZAF base in the mm -hmm. open for four months, huh? from December 21 to April 22, I think. Yeah. Yes. It had been parked there, you know, and you know, that's the rainy season is hot. So it's exposed to the elements, you know, and then um, they did whatever work they had to. I, I tried to find out what the problem was. Uh, nobody can remember or can say. Um, but it was given that AOG status, that AOG stands for aircraft on the ground. And that's the most, it's, it means that the plane has uh, uh, serious major technical issues. Yeah. So it was there for four months out in the open, exposed, you know, rain, wind, what have you, sun. Mm -hmm. And then they, they worked on it. And then uh, General Shikapasha flew it. Uh, on the 22nd, I think it was, uh, he flew it to Livingston and back. He went to Livingston. They were on the ground for like a couple of hours, and he flew, mm -hmm. they flew it back. That's a test test run. And yeah. he says it was fine. You know, it, it was fine. But, um, and this is online. You see it on the aviation network thing. Um, they took it for a second uh, test, I think, um, twenty it might have been 25 or so, uh, yeah. or 26 oh. the day before. And there were issues. They said there were issues then, but they still, you know, went ahead and decided to use it 
Yeah. Um, for, for those watching, you need to get, you need to get, because Jay, I'm extremely impressed about, you know, the information. And I, 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 I would like to borrow by Frida's phrase. She says, factual. You know, she's using that word factual. No, I was some bit of a shoot on it soon. Yeah, my sister, she's very detailed. Yeah, she's very detailed. She is, she is amazing sister, amazing lady. Mm -hmm. Um, the plane plunges into the Atlantic Ocean, but the Gabonese government is not communicating with the Zambian government, and the information everybody in Zambia is getting is from the news network. Do we know what the problem was there with the communication? Uh, I mean, I, I, this, this, this was a very serious problem for the two governments not to be talking. Yeah, well, so the, the plane crashed and you know, in Zambia, they always reference the 28th, it's actually the 27th. You always go by the local time, the date mm -hmm. and time where the event happened, you know? So it crashes, uh, I think it's quarter to 11, I think. Um, it, it's at 20, yeah, 22 45 mm -hmm. hours local time on the 27th. It's at night, of course. Yes, and um, uh, I don't know what the problem was. Uh, I spoke to General Shkapasha, he said now he was informed by his deputy, uh, a, a, I think Brigadier General Zaza was his yeah. name early in the morning. Uh, he heard on uh, one of the international radio stations, I think it was Fr France thing, that the first report was that a plane had been shot down. So that, that gave grist to the, you know, the stories that it was shot down. Mm. That was the first report. And then I think the, the German radio later said uh, that a plane, a Zambian plane had crashed. You know, I don't know. He he, he said, then he says they were not notified by the uh, Gabonese uh, authorities. They tried to con connect them. To contact them rather but mm -hmm. they couldn't get any information i don't know whether it's the language barrier you know gabon they speak uh, french i don't know whether that that's the case i i don't know why and then the president uh, then chaluba was uh in uh mm. uganda mm -hmm. that, that morning so I, I guess they had to notify him first and then he cut uh you know because i spoke to people that were actually with him there in and he cut the trip in the morning they woke up had breakfast and then they flew back to lusaka it's like a, but maybe an hour, an hour and a half flight from Uganda, I guess, two hours, yeah. Mm. And yeah, and uh, there was nothing on the radio, nothing until I think Frank Mutubila, uh, I tried to contact him, he didn't respond, but he was happy when the book came out. He read it, but still it was going around. Um, the BBC had been calling the Times of Zambia early in the morning, like about five in the morning, six, they were calling every you know few minutes. And when Jerry Kachimba got to the office, they were, you know, farmer's house there on Cairo Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He was notified by the guard that oh, uh, the BBC have been calling, you know. Yeah. And so yeah. yeah. So that's that's. So that, that's how everybody watching. That's how this information was coming through through the net, yeah. the news networks, and oh, that that wasn't good. Uh, Jay, I need to show you this. I need to show you this. Look, look who's watching. Ah, <laughs> my buddy. Yeah. 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 Hi, Gerard. Thanks well, for joining. Terrific uh, writer. Wond wonderful writer. Very witty. Yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's, he's, he's a good guy. And, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, he actually contributed to the book. He, uh, I asked him to write at the end, you know, because obviously, you know, I couldn't mention all the players in detail in, in the, you know, the text. Yeah. So right yeah. at the end, uh, I, asked, I asked Jared to just write like a little synopsis on each, each of the other players that are not covered. So he did a great job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, Pacific, we shall be telling everybody how to get the book at the end of the show. And we are, are just about to wind up. Uh, brilliant. Ray says brilliant. Well done, Jay. Thank you, Ray. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. So, oh my goodness me. That's the website, everybody. Jemwamba.com uh, if you want to get the book. And it's also available for those that live in the so-called Western countries on Amazon. You can get it from there. Um, so Frankie Mutuvila, the legendary, the man himself, steps up to read the news at 1300 hours. And basically, that's the official inform announcement that the country gets, right? That Correct. this has happened. The first official, yeah. But, the, the, you know, people, the word was going around. The word the was going official. around. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Wow. Um, the... I'm going to combine two questions here, Jay. The families were compensated. 
four million dollars for the lawyers to have won the case doesn't common sense tell us that they must have had access to the gabon air disaster which was never which was never there um, I, <laughs> go ahead, go yeah. ahead. Um, again i don't know but my conjecture and you know mm. i'm so confident about it that's why it's in the book uh you know i woke up uh you know about four years ago and i'm like mm. why i think this is like after 26 years then at that time why hasn't uh why hasn't this report uh, been released it doesn't make sense this is over a quarter of a century quarter this of a like century seven presidents yeah yeah Seven yeah. presidents. And I had a Eureka moment. It's like, oh, gosh, no wonder. You know why? Because it doesn't exist. There is no report. Mm. And uh, and I on my next trip to Zambia, and, you know, uh, President Rupia was a old, old, old family friend from, you know, when my, my dad was appointed as a diplomat to, to D.C. He mm -hmm. was the ambassador. I was I was a kid. I was about eight, eight years old. And that's when we first met uh, um President Rupia Banda and his family. So we've been family friends since. And I went to see him. Uh, mm -hmm. He had left uh, the state house then. And I said, did you see the Gabon report? Uh, are you aware of its existence? And he said, no, <laughs> there is no report. And it makes sense um, <laughs> because the the Gabonese authorities, um, they put out their report 10 years later in, in 2003. Yes. That's when they released the report, the Gabonese government, you know, through, through the, the defense uh, ministry. And then uh, a, a couple of weeks later, and it's detailed in the book, uh, the vice president, was it Nevis Mumba? Uh, yes. Yeah. He he basically read excerpts from that report. And it was a Gabonese that uh, came to the conclusion that uh, Colonel Muone had switched off the wrong engine. You know, they, they blew that. And, you know, my, my Zaf sources, old, you know, retired, did confirm that the left engine blew. It exploded. Mm -hmm. And that was a procedure, you know, in, in aviation then, it's on fire, so switch off, stop the flow of gas, you know, petrol to the engine. To the engine, you switch that's... off the other one, and then that's what doomed the plane. Uh, and that's, uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's happened before in other circumstances. I I, 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 I note that in the book. I mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, you do so, mention it. But the Gabonese authorities say that it was uh, Colonel Mone that did that. And, uh, you know, my uh, my sources told me, you know, he wasn't in the uh, cockpit. He wasn't flying the plane then. No. Uh, but um, it's unfortunate, yeah. It's just unfortunate uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's no report. So, um, Kawesha Kaunda mentioned, uh, he said, yeah, you know, how come he agreed? He says, well, how come this occurred under the tenure of President Chiluba? How come Chiluba never re re released a report? Who came after Chiluba? Manawasa? And these are different governments, huh? Chiluba yeah, yeah. MMD, right? Chiluba is MMD. MMD. Manawasa is uh, MMD. MMD. It uh, doesn't matter the party, J. I mean, I mean, so, well, I mean, the, the reason I'm saying that is because mm. there's some that claim, that say that, oh, it's uh, for political reasons. I mean, why would, uh, like, right now you have a UPND government, why would they cover up for something that's occurred under MMD? You'd think they would jump on and say, oh, wait a minute, you know, yeah, that's, that's the case. Mm. So, um, I'm confident. I don't think there is a report. If there is, let uh, if there are any journalists watching this, they should ask the president. Ask uh, President uh, Akainde. They should yes. ask pre President, uh, former President. Uh, let, 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 like you said, we're going to give the journalists in Zambia next presidential press conference. Please ask about this. Please ask about this. Okay, <laughs> we're going to end the show here today because uh, I'm sure <laughs> everybody. Uh, the, the, the one question is, um, I want to show something here. Um, uh, okay, Dr. Msoma says, this is justice for the deceased. Mm -hmm. I agree with him. I had that, there was that question, remember I was asking you, was it, was it 4 million for each family? No. No. It, it was, uh, it was uh, the lump sum. That was uh, the, the compensation for the entire, the 30, uh, the 30 families from my understanding you yeah. yeah okay Gerard says i'd say if i could trust just one journalist to get to the bottom of this mystery it will have to be jay his understanding of zambian football is an equal as it is uh, professionalism thank you Gerard. Gerard, is my relative, I can say something. Pam Cham, and you can always watch 
the start after the program is over there is a recording we are on youtube zbtr tv please subscribe to our show so that you don't miss anything that is coming up you can also follow us on youtube and um facebook zambia block talk radio and on the x what used to be twitter that's the way so jay uh, i know people can buy the book from that website those in europe and america how can people find this book in Zambia? Okay, unfortunately, it's not in the bookstores yet. Um, I, you know, I must apologize. Okay, I didn't set the price for the book. You know, the publisher, you know, that's a business, you know, because I, I wanted it to be accessible to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're working, uh, working on rectifying that. So, because my, my, my dream is really to have this book out there available to everybody and possibly, you know, maybe have the government use it as a reader, you know, secondary school, because it's a, it's, a, it's a work of history, I think, not because I wrote it, but it's, uh, you know, we need to start chronicling. And that's one of the reasons I wrote this book. We mm -hmm. need to chronicle major events in Zambia and history. Yeah, you know, you know cool. it's documented. So, you know, maybe 100 years from here, from now, if there's a, <laughs> there's still an earth, a world, you know, 200 years, 300 people we refer to it and it, it will be like a, you know, a doc documentation of this event. Um, mm -hmm. I, I can tell you quickly why I wrote it, what kept me going. Mm -hmm. um, 2016, there's a plane crash in uh, Brazil. Remember the Brazilian club that, uh, yeah. Yes. And uh, I, I, I was shocked, sudden. I rushed home from work. I saw it online. I, I, you know, I wanted to see how it was going to be reported on Be In Sport, which is the Al, Jaze Al Jazeera Sports uh, Network. Mm -hmm. And they had Gary Bailey there. Remember Gary Bailey? the uh, former Manchester United goalkeeper. He's South African born, but he played for Manchester United. He, he was a cap by England. Long story short, they asked him when when, 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 when was the last time a, a, you know, players were killed in a crash? Mm. He paused, then he goes back, oh, Manchester United, 19... I was like, what? You were on Super Sports, Gary, with Kalusha, Dennis Lotta, everybody. You were not aware of the Zambian thing, you know? Mm. So that's, that's one reason I had to write the book, you know? Yeah, it's so very important. Yeah. It's very, very important, yeah. yeah. Everybody, that was our show today. Uh, Jay, thank you. Congratulations. Job well done. Thank you. Uh, Zambia, let's make this a bestseller. And uh, <laughs> go to the website. Mm, that's one. Crash of the Buffalo by Jay Mwamba. I mean, I mean, well, I, I'm reading this book. And oh, this is one thing I, I shouldn't forget to tell you this. I don't know whether I mentioned this. When you chronicle details of, uh, you know, the, some of the games, that the team played. Guess what? I can hear Mr. Liwewe's voice in my head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. I'm like, am I am I losing my mind here? <laughs> yeah, he a, was a legend, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was a, legend. a legend. It's a very well done job. Jay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you for um, having me. Yeah, and all the best. Everybody, Jem Wamba, uh, author of... Um, crash of the buffalo um two things i want to do here before i go away next week i'll be talking to a panel a gentleman from nigeria zimbabwe and zambia will be discussing these presidential summits that the presidents are traveling to and having and they benefit the the citizens of the country and then some most of you have heard me talk about derek i always mention derek 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 does all the graphics that you see all the wonderful things and uh except for the logo it was done by pastor gladson Sonda. um the reason i have Derek up here and his wife is they run a company which does a, a graphic stuff and videography and all those things Derek and his wife were celebrating their 18th anniversary this week and in the process of celebrating their 18th anniversary Derek has lost his elder sister she died a few day a day before yesterday so i wanted to say to derek and his wife they've become family to me not just friends that my sincere condolences to you you know i love you my brother and i'm praying for you derek and his brother are very i mean in we're talking about football they are die hard supporters and believers of zb tiara uh his elder brother richard that's him right there uh, with a sister that has passed away so derek richard i have you in my heart and i'm praying for you a dear friend that i've known for 30 years that's albert and his dear wife um elizabeth 
she died on 1st January. So you can see all these things that are going on. Uh, Albert, my dear friend, praying for you, and I'll be coming to see you this evening. All right, everybody, that's our show for today. And I do hope that you have been steered up and encouraged to get this book. It is a must read. You need to read this book. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next weekend. Zambia Blog Talk Radio.